Hellos and welcome back to HR Talks with Leash, a platform aiming to motivate, inspire and elevate HR interns, graduates, students and professionals helping you to kickstart your careers. Join me on this journey to success as a HR professional finding her way within the industry and rising to the top. If you're new here, then welcome to the HR Talks with Leash community. Please can you like, comment, subscribe and click that notification bell so that you're always notified every single time I post a video. And without further ado, let's get into today's video. As you can see, I am surrounded by a different background. I'm actually at my sister's place filming today, so this is temporary. I wish it could stay forever, but it's a bit temporary. But today is the 1st of January, 2022, and it's a new year, and I just cannot wait to see what HR Talks with Leash is going to bring for you this yeah i think it's going to be an amazing year so it's a new year and with a new year sometimes comes a new jobs and new opportunities so in today's video i'm going to be giving you some tips and advice that i definitely believe that you should use if you are going for a hr interview this year and i think there's a lot of advice out there on the internet at the moment about interview tips and techniques and the right questions that you should be asking at the end, the right questions that you should be preparing for. But there's not a lot of videos out there that explain the effects on why it's so important to use specific techniques so that you can stand out from the crowd. So this is not your typical video. If you want to understand how you can excel this year and get literally chosen out of all the selected candidates and get a position at a great company then please keep watching this video so i'm actually just going to conclude the video right here for those people who just want to understand what the three tips are that i'm going to give you in this video to help you excel in your interview so the first one is prepare competency-based interview questions the second one is make sure that you talk about what you do outside of work in the interview. And finally, you need to ensure that you are asking questions that are good to ask at the end of the interview. Now, if you're just here to hear those points, then thank you so much for watching. Um, but if you want to understand why I believe these are the best tips and advice that you should be considering when preparing for your HR interview, then keep watching this video. So tip number one is to make sure you prepare for competency-based interview questions. It's essential because in today's day and age, storytelling is the best way to capture anybody's attention. Storytelling is used in everything that we do, like we're always telling stories. And if you tell the right story when it comes to a competency-based question, for example, tell me about a time when you worked in a team with a group of people, then you're going to be able to capture the interviewer's attention more. A lot of people make the mistake when it comes to these questions of just kind of listing what they've done and not actually like telling a story and ensuring they, you know, describe the situation, the task at hand, then the action element and then the result of that action. Sometimes people just say the action and not much. And a lot of times people will say, oh, we did this together and we did that. But the interview is actually kind of trying to find out what you did because you're the one who is interviewing for this job and you're the one who's going to be carrying your skills into this job if you're successful. So I think it is really important that you prepare for competency-based interview questions. If you use the STAR technique in the correct way, describing the situation, describing the task at hand, describing the action element and what you did and telling us what the result is, then there is no way you're not going to come up with a great answer if you prepare properly. Also, don't be afraid to ask if you can just have a little bit of time to think about your answer, because a lot of the time when we're going to interviews and the question is said to us by the interviewer, we just say whatever comes out of our mouth, like as soon as they've said the question, you haven't even had time to process the question. I actually did this in my HR intern interviews in both of them that I had in the summer of 2020. And the interviewers did not have a problem with me saying, oh, can I just have a second to think about that? Like, it didn't make me seem weak. And I think a lot of people think, oh, I need to answer straight away, because if I don't answer straight away, I'm going to look weak. And that's not the case. There was no comment of that when I was onboarded in my um, HR intern role. They thought I was fantastic. They never mentioned anything about, oh, you took a bit of time. I was a top candidate. So, I mean, I got the job, didn't I? So at the end of the day, don't be afraid to say, can I have a bit of time to think about that? Because it's the best thing you can do. At least you're going to probably say 
something a lot better than what you were thinking. I actually have a video based on the star technique on my channel, which actually goes through detailed questions and answers that you can use and utilize as an example for when you prepare for your interviews. So if you would like to check that video out and see those detailed answers and questions, then please click on the link above and you'll be able to see everything in detail. So tip number two, make sure that you talk about what you do outside of work within your interview. Now, a great time to bring this up would possibly be when the interviewer asks you the question, tell me about yourself. In this question, you can go into detail about what you do outside of your work and what hobbies you've picked up possibly, what really interests you, because I find that a lot of companies and interviewers just like people who do things that are different from what they do for work. It also may help you within your new job role. You never actually know, depending on what you are doing. So for example, this YouTube channel, for me, I do YouTube, I like to edit videos and I like to come up with creative ways to try and make my videos as watchable as possible. Because I mentioned that I had a YouTube channel, yes, I know it's about HR, so it's related, but there's a lot of skills that I have picked up from this YouTube channel that has helped me in a lot of different ways within my job. For example, editing videos. I now edit videos in my department at work for things that we do based on HR projects and things, which is great. And people actually come up to me and work from all different areas of the business, asking me to help them with creating videos and not even videos now. So there's, there's things that I do. For example, I hosted a panel session because people have seen my videos and they can see that I can talk to the camera and I seem confident. So, you know, a lot of different factors from me having this YouTube channel, I believe helped me to get my job. Also, my friend, she has a blog. I'm going to put the blog here. So make sure you go and check out her blog and have a read of it. It's actually really good. It's a HR blog that she's done. Um, but when she had an interview at one point, I'm sure she told me that she mentioned that she had her blog and they said, you know, um, you know, we need um, someone to help us with our social media content and maybe you would be a good fit for that you know so having different hobbies and doing different things can also give you a great chance of being able to showcase yourself in a different way and get that job it doesn't even have to be like anything related to HR because those both of those examples were related to HR but it doesn't matter if you're writing a blog for something completely different like I don't know on health or well-being or something like that or like you know what you do when you go to the gym I don't know that still shows that you're creative you think outside the box and in this generation in this day and age the way to excel within your role is to be creative in whatever you do so it's great to have different kind of hobbies. If you go to the gym, if you like going for walks, if you like to knit, if you like to sew, if you like to, I don't know if you might have a, a clothing brand that you're doing or you might invest. But there's so many things that you can just bring up and talk about yourself. Have a conversation with them when it comes to this question. Be relaxed because people do not want robots in their company. They don't just want people who can do the job and go home. They want to know that they're bringing in somebody that's got a bit of something to them do you know what i mean so yeah make sure you talk about what you do outside of work and finally tip number three make sure you ask questions at the end of the interview like i'm telling you this is so important it's just so important 75 percent of candidates who go for interviews do not ask questions at the end of the interview like can you believe that 75%? So that's there's a 25% of people who are, and I'm telling you, out of that 25%, I bet you the majority of that 25% got the job in the end, right? Because I feel like people don't see how important this is, and I have made a video on this, so please make sure you check out that video. So when the interviewers rounded up the interview and they've said, thank you so much for attending, have you got any questions for me? So many people say, no, I don't have any of the questions. Thank you so much. Thinking that that's the best way to end the interview. It is not. Even if you just ask one question, like you will have a better chance than those other people that haven't asked anything at all. So I think it's important to ask the right questions at the end of the interview. You can actually ask the wrong questions and I'll go into that in a sec. But the right kind of questions to ask are, what is the office or company culture like? What is the major challenges that you face on a day to day basis? How do you find working at this company? What do you enjoy best about the role that you're in? 
Like, you need to ask these kind of questions to understand what they think about the company as well and their perspective and view because ultimately this is a two-way relationship they are interviewing you so that they can understand who you are because they need to know who they're bringing in and vice versa you are basically asking these questions to understand them because you want to join a company that's got a great company culture so it's just really important to ask those at the end and I think a lot of interviewers value people who ask questions at the end because it seems that they're interested in the role they're interested in you know what they're getting into now there are some questions that I think you should not be asking and especially if it's like the first interview stage and you know you haven't even got off of the job yet or anything like that asking questions about how much sick pay am I going to get if I go on sick leave or can I take my holiday straight away when I start the company? You know, like things like that. No, I wouldn't do it. You want to make the best impression possible. You want to show that you are ready to work at this company. So that is the end of the video. I hope that those three tips that I've given you are very useful and helpful for you landing your dream HR intern, HR admin, HR assistant jobs in 2022. If this video has helped you to get a position, like if you've watched this video and you've gone for your interview and you've got a position, come right back to the comments and let me know because I love hearing about people getting jobs from looking at some of my content and getting some inspiration from some of it. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next video.